uh, well, I mentioned the infrastructure. There's about a hundred million billion dollar infrastructure deficit already in Canada, and goodness knows how much to replace. And the existing infrastructure is designed on historical climate values, and uh, it's difficult and expensive to up upgrade if, as the climate changes. Uh, and these critical impact infrastructures have huge impacts on the well-being and operation of society. Uh, for example, electrical power, because in, in climate change we'll see more incidences of uh, freezing rain events in the Ottawa Valley, for example. Uh, it will be the hot spot for heavy rain in North America. <clears throat> And infrastructure is normally built for the long term. We've got to get the engineers and the communities on board to uh, take this into account. There are some communities that have already done so. Hamilton, for example, has put in place uh, much more storage in their uh, upstream storage in uh, their the little creeks leading into their storm sewer systems. Next one, please. Uh, ice, of course, uh, is disappearing. Uh, as the climate warms. Uh, these are the uh, uh, trends in, in lake ice on Lake Erie here in the four of the five of the Great Lakes. I, I, unfortunately, I don't have Lake Ontario. Uh, and uh, this has uh, some rather serious effects. Uh, as the ice disappears, the water warms, and we get more evaporation from the water, so we get a trend towards uh, lower levels, and uh, secondly, it uh, makes the uh, the warmer surface waters uh, makes the stratification period, the period in which the hot warm water near the top of the lake uh, is separated from the cold water near the bottom, uh, it makes that much longer, and so you get more incidents of uh, oxygen depletion in the bottom water as the algae that forms in the surface sink to the bottom, decay, and use up the bottom water oxygen in the summer months. Summer months are longer, especially with less ice. Next one. Uh, this is uh, to give you an idea of what's happening to our rivers. Uh, as I said earlier, we, we expect more precipitation in the north, and the, these two rivers, uh, the Athabasca and the Liard, are part of the Mackenzie uh, the Mikey Mackenzie system, and the Liard arises in the Yukon, and where the snowfall is increasing, and uh, the Athabasca comes off the Athabasca Glacier and goes across the central part of Alberta, and <coughs> past the oil signs marked with an X, and uh, on into uh, the Mackenzie system. Uh, the graph here uh, is. Uh, a very simple kind of idea. It's, it's called the Spearman correlation coefficient. When when uh, the trend is upwards, uh, you get a positive value. When the trend is downward, you get a negative value. So you can see that for the Liard River, all the blue, uh, it, most of it's upward except for a few uh, summer months. And uh, so the total flow of the Liard River is on the increase. Uh, on the Athabasca River, from which the oil sand draws most of its water, we see the uh, flows in the red, and in almost the whole year, except for April, which is neutral, uh, you have a decline in flow on the Athabasca River. Now that's partly due to the retreat of the glacier, and partly due to the increased evaporation on the length of the river. Uh, the real worry is, of course, that uh, the oil sands take a huge amount of water, and uh, the, whether there's enough water left, uh, well, if you have, have the full oil sands development that's projected, uh, whether there will be enough water left to sustain ecosystems and human health downstream is a very uh, moot point. Next one. Uh, one other thing that's happening, of course, as the earth warms, is that the sea water warms and it also becomes more acid because the sea absorbs uh, some of the carbon dioxide. And thank goodness it does because otherwise it would be much warmer. Uh, and uh, this shows the, the trend since 1911 of uh, water levels at, at 
at Charlottetown, uh, and it's the, the trend has been upward more rapidly over the world uh, in the last little while, about 3.2 centimeters per decade, and uh, uh, 32 centimeters per century. And similar uh, rises are uh, observed at other places in the Atlantic. Uh, on the west coast, the thing is kind of mixed up because uh, uh, much of the land is rising. At Tofina on the west coast of, uh, of uh, Vancouver Island, uh, the land is rising from isostatic rebound after the glaciers departed uh, more rapidly than sea level is rising. But in the Fraser Delta, uh, the land is sinking and sea level is rising and storm surges are increasing. <coughs> so that's a disaster waiting to happen in uh, the uh, Fraser Delta area. Uh, next one, please. This just shows you uh, what happens when you get a storm. These uh, dark red areas are areas where you have uh, storm surges of the order of uh, more than a meter. And so the uh, between a meter and two meters. Uh, so in a big storm with sea level going up, you get uh, the, sh the coastline of Nova Scotia and, uh, and uh, New Brunswick inundated in the storm surge. I live in the dark red right there. Okay, pardon? I live right in the dark red right there. <laughs> you do? I do. Well, well there you go. <laughs> Have you noticed it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you. You should take up some time. Uh, another thing that's hap happened is that uh, as the temperature has gone up and uh, the temperature anomaly is, uh, is the I think it's the <laughs> one of these is the temperature anomaly, and the other is the area burned. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure which. Uh, but uh, what it says is that the area burned at, uh, anomaly is very much related to temperature, and so as the temperature has risen across Canada, uh, the amount of area burned in forest fires has gone up enormously, and that's likely to continue. Next one, please. Uh, uh, just a couple of words about uh, Canada's uh, actions and, or inactions on climate change, uh, which I'm, I'm sure the other speakers will cover. Uh, this is a performance ranking of uh, industrial nations by OECD. And uh, look at there, we beat Belgium and the United States. <laughs> But we're far behind, far behind most others. Now that wasn't entirely a question of, uh, of climate change. It's on other issues too: air pollutants, pesticide use, water consumption. Mm -hmm. Canadians consume more water per capita than any other country in the world, as far as we can tell. And that's partly because the price of water in Canada is uh, pretty well the lowest. So our record internationally is not good, and it's no wonder that we get the Fossil of the Year Award at uh, Copenhagen. Next one, please. And uh, this is sort of the attitude that many of us have. Environmentalists are really just out to reduce the quality of our lifestyle. <laughs> so they just, you know. And uh, this, this illustrates another important issue. I mean, the, the question of regulating the efficiency of vehicles in Canada has been a disastrous uh, situation. I mean, the, there's obvious ways in which car manufacturers can make far more efficient vehicles than they now sell. And uh, we just haven't uh, had the nerve to regulate them. And the Americans are a little better, but not much. So uh, there are many ways in which uh, we could take action that wouldn't really hurt anybody very much. Okay, that's what I had to say.